The Jordan River is of symbolic and spiritual significance to many since the Bible says this is where Jesus was baptized. Parts of the river are running low because of water diversions from the river and pollution, but efforts to save it are complicated by the decades-old Arab-Israel conflict. The Jordan River, once a vital lifeline, now lies desolate and dry. Beneath its vanished waters, long hidden secrets come to light, unveiling dark and astonishing truths. Myths transform into reality, and history undergoes a profound rewrite before our very eyes. Forgotten mysteries resurface, challenging our understanding of the past. Why could be the reason behind this drought? Join us as we delve into the most astounding discoveries emerging from the dry bed of the legendary Jordan River. Picture yourself gliding through the clear waters of Lake Geneva. The stunning beauty of the Swiss Alps surrounds you. Everything is peaceful until you spot something unusual underwater. A big statue of a shark. This isn't just something you dreamed up. It's real and it puzzles both the people who live nearby and the visitors. No one knows where this strange shark statue came from. This mystery makes the shark even more interesting to look at. Some people think that an artist put the shark there as part of an art project. Others guess it was all for advertising or just someone having fun. No matter why it's there, the shark statue is famous now. It attracts people from all over who want to see it up close. The statue is tall, more than eight feet, and it's made to last. It looks so real that when you swim by, you might think its sharp smile and staring eyes are following you. It feels like you're in a movie, which makes swimming there an adventure. And there's more to the story. Some say that this shark was once in a movie, which makes it even cooler. Whether it's from a film or just a new mystery, the shark statue is definitely something special to see. Next, we're off to Japan's mysterious underwater world. Dive into the story of the Yonaguni Monument, hidden under the ocean's surface near Japan. Some people call it the Japanese Atlantis because it's so mysterious. It's a huge stone structure under the water, and no one is sure who made it or why. It's been a puzzle for a long time. Even though it's a mystery, anyone brave enough can go dive there to see it themselves. But be warned, the area is known for its many hammerhead sharks and strong ocean currents. It's a place for those who like a bit of danger with their adventure. Masaki Kimura, a scientist who studies the ocean floor, thinks people made the Yonaguni Monument a long time ago. It has big steps cut into the rock, he says, but not everyone agrees with him. Some other scientists say the monument is just a natural part of the seafloor formed from sandstone over thousands of years. Divers have seen some strange things down there like carvings and parts of what might have been buildings or even a stadium. Could these be signs of an old lost city? Maybe from the mysterious ancient Yamatai culture? It's all very exciting, but we have to be careful. No one has proven any of this for sure yet. So for now, the true story of Yonaguni stays hidden, waiting for someone to solve its secrets. Discover what old riverbeds can tell us when the water's gone. Imagine walking along a river that's drying up. As the water disappears, you start to see something incredible. Giant footprints pressed into the ground. This happened in Texas not too long ago. A dried up riverbed showed off a trail of enormous, triangle-shaped footprints. People think these footprints were made by a huge dinosaur, a kind of giant lizard that lived a long, long time ago. This dinosaur was enormous, weighing around 14,000 pounds, and it wandered around this area, which was once covered by the sea, over 113 million years ago. But there's more to the story than just dinosaur footprints. Over in China, there's been a big drought too. The Yi River's water levels went way down because of the heat, and guess what? Three old Buddhist statues appeared like magic from under the water. They've been hidden there for more than 600 years. These statues were found sitting quietly on what's left of an island, and they date back to times we only read about in history books, the Ming and Qing dynasties. And behind me, you can see how high the usual water level markings are on this bridge. But now this riverbed is exposed after days of high heat. One of these statues shows a calm monk sitting down, which makes you feel peaceful just by looking at it. They're carved right into the hard rock, showing us a piece of China's long and fascinating history. But that's not all the drying water has shown us. In the same area, people found an old shipwreck over a hundred years old. Imagine the stories that ship could tell. So the water going down isn't just about rivers getting dry. It's like opening a book on the world's history, showing us dinosaurs, ancient religions, and long lost ships. Let's travel to the area around the Jordan River, where people keep finding amazing things. One of the biggest surprises ever found there are the Dead Sea Scrolls. These old papers and parchments were found hidden in caves near the Dead Sea, near a place called Qumran. They were discovered between 1947 and 1956, and they're really, really old like 2,000 years old. That makes them some of the oldest pieces of writing connected to the Bible that we've ever found. But what's in these scrolls? 
Well, they, they're made up of different kinds of writings. Some are parts of the Bible as we know it, from way before the versions we have today. There are about 200 pieces of the Hebrew Bible, and they've got bits from almost every book, except for one. Then there are other writings that people hadn't seen before or that were lost in time, which give us clues about what life and beliefs were like back then. And there's even more. Some of the scrolls talk about the rules and beliefs of a group called the Essens, who lived in the area a long time ago. They wrote down their laws, their prayers, and their thoughts about religion. But not all the scrolls are about their community. Some were probably brought there from other places. So the Dead Sea Scrolls aren't just old papers. They're like a time capsule, giving us a peek into what life, religion, and society were like thousands of years ago in that part of the world. It's like piecing together a giant puzzle of human history where every piece helps us understand a bit more about our past. Dive into a Chinese lake where a whole city is hidden underwater. In the middle of China lies a hidden gem that many compare to the legendary Atlantis. But this place has its own unique story filled with wonder, beauty, and a touch of sadness. This place is known as Lion City, a name that evokes strength and majesty. However, beneath its grandeur lies a heart-rending history of sacrifice and change. Back in 1959, China was on the brink of a major development project. They planned to build a dam and a hydroelectric power station to bring electricity and modern conveniences to millions. But there was a cost. They had to flood an area to create a huge lake for the dam, which meant moving about 300,000 people from their homes. Among the places that had to go underwater was Lion City, a place teeming with history and ancient architecture. Imagine streets, buildings, and temples that had stood for hundreds of years suddenly swallowed up by the water. Families who had lived there for generations had to pack up their lives and leave, knowing their homes and history would be lost under the waves. It was a time of great loss as a whole chunk of cultural heritage was erased from sight, hidden beneath the water's surface. But even as we mourn Lion City, there's another mystery lurking in waters far away from China. In the clear blue seas of the Bahamas, there's a strange formation known as the Bimini Road. Picture a long line of rocks on the ocean floor, stretching almost half a mile, looking just like a cobbled street. Some think it could be part of a sunken civilization, much like the stories of Atlantis or Lion City. But not everyone agrees. Some experts think it's just a natural rock formation, shaped by time and tide. Just like with the Yonaguni Monument in Japan, the Bimini Road is a puzzle waiting to be solved. Is it a pathway to an ancient underwater world? Or is it simply the Earth sculpting itself in remarkable ways? The debate goes on as scientists and explorers dive deep to unlock the secrets of these underwater mysteries. Now let's dive into a different kind of underwater mystery, one that's more about beauty and nature's creativity. Have you ever heard of underwater crop circles? Yes, you read that right, crop circles, but not in the fields where you might expect them. These are in the ocean, and they're not made by humans or aliens, but by tiny spotted pufferfish from Japan. These little fish, no bigger than a teacup, are the unlikely artists of the sea. They work tirelessly, swimming and flapping their fins, moving the sand on the ocean floor into beautiful, complex designs. These aren't just any random patterns. They're meticulously crafted circles with intricate details, all created by a single small fish. Why do they do it? It's all for love. The male pufferfish makes these circles to attract a mate. The better the circle, the better his chances of winning a partner. The center of the circle is super important. It's where the female pufferfish lays her eggs. The designs around it aren't just for show, they help protect the eggs from currents and predators, making sure the next generation of pufferfish gets a safe start in life. For a long time, these underwater circles were a complete mystery. People stumbled upon them and wondered who or what could create such perfect, detailed patterns. It took scientists more than 10 years of watching, waiting, and studying to finally figure out the secret artist behind these underwater masterpieces. Discovering that these small, seemingly ordinary fish were behind such elaborate and beautiful creations was a reminder of how surprising and imaginative nature can be. It's a testament to the incredible things that can be found in the depths of the sea, hidden from human eyes. Once there was a very long dry time and something good happened. We got to look at old stuff from a long time ago. There's more to find than just old boats under the water and big statues. The dry weather in Europe has shown us something else cool, old warships that have been hiding under rivers for over 100 years. These old warships are not just broken boats. They are like bridges to the past. They tell us how people fought on the sea and traveled across the oceans a long time ago. As the rivers get lower, these big old boats start to show up from under the water. They are all broken and old. But tell us about what happened a long time ago. One of the coolest things we found is a really big boat at the bottom of the Mississippi River. This huge boat has been under the water for so long, 
but now we can see it. It's all rusty and falling apart, but it's like a silent storyteller of old times. It reminds us of brave adventures and big fights on the ocean. But these old broken boats are more than just cool to look at. They are like outdoor museums. Scientists can learn a lot from them about old boat technology and what life was like for people sailing the seas long ago. Step back in time to explore ancient homes not meant for humans. We found something at this place that makes us think differently about it. Usually when we see old walls and floors, we think people lived there. But what if they were actually for animals? This could mean that a lot more was going on here than we first thought. There are a few clues that show us this might have been a place where people moved through, not stayed all the time. The place is in a tough area to live. It's really hot and dry, which would be hard for people not used to it. The weather can get up to a super hot 45 degrees to see. With almost no rain, there would hardly be any water for growing food or even just to drink. Also, this place is kind of hidden away by hills around it, which means the people there might have wanted to stay hidden. They could have been moving away from danger or other groups of people. The hills around the place would help keep them safe from anyone who might want to attack them. While we can't be sure about everything, these ideas help us guess how people long ago might have lived and moved around. Deep at sea, we find an ancient tool that shows how smart people were. A long time ago, people found something really interesting deep in the sea near the Greek islands. This happened back in 1901 when they were checking out an old sunken ship. Everyone who saw it was amazed. So what was it that made everyone so excited? When people looked more into it, they found out it was an ancient tool, kind of like a very old computer from way before our time, around 82 BC. This wasn't just any tool. It was made to help people understand the sky better. They could use it to know where the moon and the sun were, figure out when eclipses would happen, and other cool sky stuff. This was super important for sailors back then because they didn't have GPS like we do. They needed the stars to know where they were going on the big blue sea. But there's a big question that people still can't figure out. How did the ancient Greeks make something so clever and accurate? Even now, with all our modern knowledge and tools, nobody has been able to make one just like the old Greeks did. Under the sea, a path might just lead us to a lost world. Not too far from the Bimini Islands, under the water, there's this strange road-like thing called the Bimini Road. It's not deep down, just about 18 feet, and goes on for almost half a mile. This isn't just a bunch of rocks. It's made of a special kind of stone that you only find in places like the Bahamas. But here's the weird part. It looks like someone put those rocks there on purpose. They're all smooth and round, almost like they were shaped by someone or something. And get this, there was a famous American guy, Edgar Cayce, who talked about this underwater road 30 years before anyone actually saw it. He thought it could help find some old temples from a place called Atlantis, which is a city from old stories that supposedly disappeared. People think Atlantis is just a story, but the Bimini Road makes them wonder. It's like there's this secret underwater guide that could lead to discovering something really ancient and forgotten. It's as though the Bimini Road is a clue to the mystery no one has solved yet. The desert sands hide fierce animals from long ago. Once upon a time, not people, but nature itself preserved some ancient giants of the river. Imagine a group of archaeologists like treasure hunters digging through sandy pits near what used to be a flowing river Nile, now all dried up. What they found was like stepping into a time machine. Not one, not two, but several old crocodile remains with heads and bodies all dried up like mummies. It's like these crocodiles were frozen in time, showing us a snapshot of a world long gone. Now let's take a trip to Australia, another part of our world where scientists couldn't believe their eyes. They found a crocodile from a very, very long time ago. We're talking about 95 million years. This old crocodile is shaking up everything scientists thought they knew about how crocodiles came to be. It's like finding a missing piece of a huge jigsaw puzzle, showing us more about the giant creatures that once roamed our Earth, even before the first human footprints appeared. But that's not all. Every time we find something like this, it's like opening a new door to the past. We get to learn a bit more about the mysteries of our world, about the animals that lived here before us. These ancient river monsters and their mummified remains are like time travelers from the past, teaching us about the history of our planet piece by piece. Follow old trails to see how people hunted thousands of years ago. Now let's wander near the Jordan River, where the land hides stories of ancient hunters. Like detectives of history, Dr. Ben and his team are trying to piece together a story from thousands of years ago. It's a tricky job, like completing a puzzle without all the pieces. They're looking for clues to understand an old story that might even explain the Exodus, a famous journey from ancient texts. Think of it, long, long ago, the area was buzzing with life not cars or cities, but with people hunting and living off the land. They were after big game, 
like a now extinct giant wild cattle. Can you imagine that? At a place called Nahal Mahanaim, they found many bones, which help us picture this ancient hunting site. This place seemed perfect for ambushes. Ancient humans waiting quietly, then bam, they strike to get their food. But who were these skilled hunters? That's still a big question. They could have been like us, or maybe different. We're not quite sure yet. They didn't have fancy tools or weapons, but they were smart and brave, facing giant beasts with nothing but simple tools, risking their lives for their next meal. And there's more. Imagine this, ancient humans, just like families today, gathered by the river, cooking fish they caught from a nearby lake over 870,000 years ago. These discoveries, like fish teeth found near old rivers, help us picture these moments. It shows us how long people have been coming together, sharing meals and stories by the water. These ancient riverside gatherings tell us a story of survival, community, and the unbroken thread that connects us with our ancient ancestors. Find out why old trains are sleeping under the sea, hidden corner outside New Jersey, where trains, not ships, find their unexpected final stop under the sea. It's weird, right? Trains usually stick to the tracks on land, but here they are, deep underwater. These aren't just any trains, they're from the 1850s, a whisper from the past. But the story of how they ended up at the bottom of the sea is shrouded in mystery. There are two old steam engines lying silent in the deep, their history almost wiped clean. No one wrote down why they were built or how they got there. It's like they just vanished and reappeared under the sea. Some people guess that maybe they were being shipped from Boston and got lost in a big storm, but nobody really knows. There's nothing left of any ship that might have carried them. No signs of a disaster, nothing. It's as if they were gently placed on the ocean floor, leaving us with a giant puzzle. But here's the cool part. You don't just have to wonder about these ghost trains from afar. If you're brave enough, you can actually dive down and see them up close. Imagine swimming around these massive, silent pieces of history, trying to pick up clues that have been lost to time. Maybe you'll notice something no one else has, and piece together the story of their mysterious journey to the deep. So if you're up for an adventure, why not dive into this underwater mystery and see what secrets you can uncover? In cold waters, a strange shape waits with secrets. Now let's dive into colder waters, the northern Baltic Sea, where a team called Ocean X were hunting for treasure but found a mystery instead. They saw something unbelievable with their underwater cameras a huge circle about 200 feet across, sitting on the ocean floor. But it wasn't just a simple circle. It looked like it had parts you'd find in a building, like ramps and stairs, and none of it made sense for just a piece of the seafloor. People had lots of guesses. Some said it's just a weird-shaped rock that nature made all by itself. But the team from Ocean X, they felt sure they had found something out of this world, especially when their equipment started acting all strange, right when they got close, like something was stopping them from taking a closer look. What's really down there? Is it something from another planet or just a tricky shape made by the sea? Even after trying hard, the Ocean X team still couldn't figure it out. And that just makes everyone else more curious. Is it a secret the Earth is keeping or a clue from outer space? No matter what, the mystery of what's lying in the Baltic Sea keeps us all guessing and dreaming. It's a reminder that there are still unexplained wonders out there, deep in the ocean, waiting for someone bold enough to find the truth. Walk along a river to find giant bones from the Ice Age. Imagine walking by a quiet river, the kind of place where the Earth seems full of secrets. It's here, on a journey along the muddy shores of a Siberian river, where an adventurous soul might find something incredible. Picture finding, half hidden in the mud, a giant tusk, stretching almost as long as a small car. This isn't just any old piece of bone. It's a mammoth tusk from the huge creatures that used to roam the earth long before humans wrote down history. But that's not all. As this explorer, driven by curiosity, dug a little deeper into the secrets of the riverbank, another treasure emerged from the past, the mammoth's skull. This wasn't just a skull. It was like finding a buried crown from a lost kingdom, complete with its own set of enormous tusks, telling a silent story of the ancient world. But the story of this place, this window into the past, kept unfolding. Along with the giant tusk and skull, there lay pieces of the ancient world, bits of bone, long gone plants, and hints of creatures we'll never see alive. It's as if the land itself held onto these stories, waiting for someone to uncover them. Now these whispers from the past, from the mammoth's tusk to its mighty skull, have found a new home in a museum. Here they're more than just old bones. They're messengers from a time when giants walked the earth, inviting us to wonder and learn from a world we'll never see. A testament 
to the awe-inspiring history of our planet. Enter Petra, an ancient city carved from cliffs. Petra, nestled in the heart of Jordan, is where stories from thousands of years ago come to life. Carved into towering cliffs of deep red stone, this city is a bridge between ancient dreams and modern discovery. The Nabataeans, the masterminds behind this wonder, turned the rock into a masterpiece over 2,000 years ago. The journey into Petra takes you through narrow cliffs that suddenly part to reveal the treasury, a sight so magnificent it looks like it's from another world. But Petra is more than just the treasury. This city, once filled with the hustle and bustle of traders and travelers, stands as a testament to human creativity and endurance. Every nook and cranny of Petra tells a story, from its meticulously carved buildings to the remnants of daily life long ago. Suddenly the world reads about Petra. The entrance into Petra, magnificent carved structure about 140 feet high. Beyond the famous facades, the city stretches out, inviting explorers to discover its heart. The great temple looms with the echoes of ancient worship. While the royal tombs stand as silent guardians of history, their intricate designs a symbol of a bygone elite. But perhaps what's most astonishing is Petra's scale, a sprawling city carved into the mountains, home to thousands at its peak. Today, Petra isn't just a place, it's a journey into the past. Archaeologists uncover new secrets every day, pulling back the veil on Petra's mysteries. This city of stone invites us to walk in the footsteps of ancients, to stand where they stood, and to marvel at what humans can achieve. Petra remains a symbol of our shared heritage, a place where history and beauty intertwine, urging us to keep exploring the wonders of our world. Dive to see an art gallery where fish swim among the statues. In the warm, clear waters of Grenada lies a unique attraction, an underwater sculpture park. This underwater gallery spans over 2,600 square feet and is home to 75 amazing sculptures. These aren't just any sculptures. They sit not too far from the ocean surface. This means you don't have to be a professional diver to see them. Even people on boats with see-through bottoms can enjoy the view from above the water. The brain behind this beautiful underwater world is Jason DeCares Taylor, a very talented artist. But Taylor didn't just want to create something beautiful to look at. He had a bigger goal. He wanted to make a safe place for ocean creatures. In many parts of the ocean, there aren't enough natural places for fish and other sea life to live and hide. Taylor's sculptures give them new homes. They become covered with sea plants and animals, turning from plain statues into lively underwater neighborhoods. But there's more to this underwater park than just being a home for fish. It also helps protect the beaches nearby. How? By attracting people to view the sculptures, fewer people trample over the natural, more delicate parts of the ocean nearby. In short, this underwater park is more than just art. It's a place where fish can thrive and where the natural beauty of the ocean is kept safe from harm. Join us deep underwater where a golden ball puzzles everyone. Deep in the cold, dark waters off Alaska's Pacific coast, a strange golden sphere was found. This shiny ball with a weird hole in the middle was discovered two miles under the sea by a remote-controlled submarine. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, is on the case. They're using science to figure out what this mysterious object is. They have developed special tools to touch and pick up the golden sphere without damaging it. When they looked closer, they found that the sphere's surface felt like skin. This made everyone even more curious. They broke a piece off to examine in their lab. On a live broadcast, scientists tossed around guesses about the sphere. Is it an egg that's already hatched? or maybe something that lives on or in other sea creatures. No one knows yet, and that's what makes it so exciting. It's like the start of a spooky sea story, full of unknowns and thrilling discoveries. Watch as Spain's own version of Stonehenge comes out of the water. After being hidden underwater for 50 years, a group of mysterious stone structures has popped up in Spain. They were first found in 1926 when there wasn't much water around. But then they disappeared underwater and only recently showed up again because there's not much rain. Here and across Europe experiencing its worst drought in 500 years and what's now been revealed in Spain. These stones are not just random rocks. They are tall, heavy, and set up in circles, kind of like the famous Stonehenge in England. This has made many people, especially those who study old things, very excited. They think these might be old graves because they found bones around them but there's still so much we don't know. What were these stones for? Who put them there? And why are they set up in a circle? Some think they might have been used for tracking stars or for special ceremonies. As scientists keep looking into these stones, they hope to uncover the secrets of the past. 
This place isn't just important for history, it's a piece of Spanish culture, and might even tell us more about the stars in the sky from long ago. Meet a strange squid living where light can't reach. The vampire squid might sound scary, but it's actually quite the opposite. This small, deep-sea creature is not out hunting like other squids. Instead, it's more like the ocean's cleanup crew. The vampire squid is less than a foot long and looks a bit like a vampire because of its webbed arms kind of like a cloak. But don't let the name fool you. This squid eats dead things floating down from the ocean's top layers, which is why some people call it the vacuum cleaner of the deep. It lives where the ocean is very deep and very dark. It's got big eyes that help it see in the dark, and it moves around gently in the cold water. Even though it's called a vampire, it's not out to get anyone. It lives a quiet life in the dark, moving slowly to save energy since there's not much food down there. Scientists find the vampire squid interesting because of how different it is from other ocean animals. They keep learning new things about how it lives and survives in one of the toughest places on Earth. Have the secrets of the Jordan River altered our understanding of history, or are they just echoes of the past? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more revelations.